I'm Margaret Cowling. I have been a member of the 20 Melbourne Painters Society since 1990 and I, I consider that this is a great privilege and uh, a great honour to be in this group of painters and to be here for the 100th anniversary of the Society is extraordinary. How fortunate. My training was in illustration at the Royal Melbourne Technical College, which now, of course, is RMIT. And uh, my training was in, as I said, in illustration, which gave me painting and drawing, my two absolute passions. I was very fortunate to have been taught by a painting by William Freighter, Jock Freighter, who inspired everyone and particularly inspired me as I had no idea where I was going. And I have never forgotten his words of, just look at it, girl. It's there and there's the colour. And that's how I think. I paint on location, uh, plein air painting. That is something that drives me hugely. And I'll hop outside into the, uh, into the landscape. Uh, I wander around lakes. I, I paint trees. I paint stones on the ground. I'm there with the the insects and the blowflies, come what may, I'll do it. I paint in the studio figures. I've painted figures for many years, enjoy that hugely. And I paint still life. I did teach for a number of years. I taught at the Victorian Artists Society. I taught at Malvern Artists Society and conducted workshops from uh, Creswick, where we have a, a little miner's cottage. And it's a very good base already in the country, lovely place to share with other people who like to do the same thing as I do. This is an image that uh, I'll be using to paint this watercolour. Uh, it's taken down in Western Port Bay. I'll start with uh, my hate brush, which is um, a little hate brush I use a lot to, to wash over all the paper. My name's Clive Sinclair. I, I normally paint a lot of coastal watercolours. I like atmospheric watercolours. I've been with the 20 Melbourne painters 20 years now. Um, so I'm always after atmospheric uh, quality of light in my work. I love a lot of the old romantic watercolourists of the turn of the century, um, the Hilders and people like that, and Sturgis's. So it's those sort of painters I admire and uh, love to capture. So I'm always out there looking for atmosphere through my washes and, and uh, watercolours to make them work. It's predominantly light that I'm chasing through all my work. Now it's really important for me at the moment to get this lovely reflection that's running into the pond. I think that's really important for me to capture at the moment, just to hear. Now we um, Bring in the background feeling through the, the horizon line that's going to come up through uh, forming the painting of the composition up through there. So I'll add a little bit more ultramarine blue. And what I'm going to do is bring in some more of the trees as well. So just these little scraggly gums at the top. So we'll just darken some of these in here a little bit more. We're just adding those through to just add a bit more depth to it. Australian red gold and a bit more of that magenta. Leaving some lights like that coming through, which I think work very well for a painting that makes it come together. And we're getting that lovely afternoon light coming through on a soft day, which I chase in painting as much as I can. I just put this couple of bits in here, and I've created what I wanted to achieve. So I was about just creating this light and this lovely afternoon atmospheric watercolour to light coming through it. I'm Lee Makalak and I have been a member of the 20 Melbourne Painters for 22 or 23 years. Prior to joining the 20 Melbourne, I was lucky enough to be the recipient of the 1993 AME Vale Travelling Scholarship which enabled me to travel overseas with financial freedom, relative financial freedom for an artist, for travel overseas for 12 months um, in order to study, to uh, 
broaden my experience and my knowledge and uh, look at the major European uh, galleries and old master paintings and importantly to study at the Florence Academy which I did for six months. Um, at the Academy we drew from the model every day, um, life model, and in the afternoon there was painting, um, portrait or still life. That year had a profound effect on me. I was surrounded by dramatic religious paintings and when I came back I had a, a desire to paint my own modern day Madonna. I had the picture in my mind, it took me a few years in, until I met the subject of this portrait and she was uh, she was my muse, she was my Madonna. I love to paint portraits. I particularly love to paint the people around me because then I have something to say about the subject and the subject usually gives me something which I can hopefully capture on canvas as, as like this portrait. This was Maria, um, this is her expression. I was, I was able to capture that and um, that, that's what I like to do particularly. Hi, I'm Peter Smales. I've been a member of the 20 Melbourne Painters since about 1994, I think it was. I've been interested in painting all my life. Don't ask me why, it's just a childhood hobby. And uh, uh, I think it might be something to do with coming to Australia from England when I was a child, I was eight, and just seeing a whole new landscape. Maybe that opens your eyes. We lived in an area where there were some artists, Sir William Dargy, portrait painter, and uh, and other artists. I got influenced by the Meldrum School, Alan Martin, Ron Crawford, and so the hobby sort of developed. You're endlessly absorbing all these different influences and uh, trying to put them into your work. What I like is sort of a colourful, impressionistic kind of an approach. It's just a very tactile way of sort of engaging with the world. It's just th places that you love, things that you see, and it's all nature, is all beautiful, whether it's flowers, seascapes, portraits, it's all how you paint it. The style of painting is a sort of colourful, impressionistic type of an affair uh, approach. It's basically, you can't improve on nature. It's endlessly, inexhaustibly interesting. And so it's just my way of interacting with the world. And it is basically the fall of light on objects, illusionistic painting. But I just love the sort of painterliness. It's also a painting. It isn't reality, so it conforms to things of composition, balance, colour, rhythm, brush marks and all those things that make painting interesting and exciting to look at. I stick fairly closely to the tones so it's, you see the fall of light on objects but heighten the sense of the colours so that you get these beautiful blues running through and the lilacs. I try to leave the marks a bit brushy so that they just look, they left a little bit like brush marks and a little bit like reality, that's the thing. You don't want to try to hide your track so it looks like a photograph or have it looking like a painting. That's basically what I'm trying to do. The colours will be subtly changed, the lilacs pushed, you know, the greens, try to get them the same sort of colours running through. It's like an embroidered artwork, basically. That's the sort of painting I like. I guess I'll just keep doing it. Being an artist is, for me, both a privilege and a joy. And through my work, I hope to share something of that joy with the viewers of my work. Mainly through the selection of the subjects, I try to go beyond the mere depiction of the subject to try to capture something of the feeling of actually being there at that moment. Here, for example, this painting is called Lunch at Le Sommet, and it depicts an outdoor restaurant on the banks of the Midi Canal in southwest France. And here I've tried to capture the heat of a hot summer day, uh, the cool, dense shade of the plane trees, uh, lovely food and wine, the lapping of the water of the canal. In other words, to try and capture something of the beauty of a day that you wish could go on forever. I've been a member of the 20 Melbourne Painter Society for 15 years. Most of the work I do is in oil paint, although I also work in watercolour and pastel. And here I've tried to capture the mood of 7 o'clock in the morning 
at one of those beautifully breathlessly still mornings at Bird Rock Beach in Mount Martha when the early morning light illuminates not only the cliffs and the beach and the water but the air itself and here we share the joy of the early morning jogger. One of the privileges of being an artist is the opportunity that it provides to be able to create something of truly lasting value using the best quality materials available. A painting, for example, will last for several lifetimes, offering pleasure to generations of its viewers. And I hope that my paintings will continue to bring pleasure to people for many years to come. I'm Paul MacDonald Smith. I'm a member of the 20 Melbourne Painters Society now for 20 something years. And I've been working as a professional artist and painter since, uh, well, the 70s actually, so over 40 years. So, uh, And uh, I work principally in a tonal impressionist style, uh, largely influenced by the Meldrum School, but uh, I don't really call myself a Meldrumite. But, uh, I do work in the tonal style, particularly influenced by Sir William Dargy, who was my uh, real mentor initially. Uh, I got to know Sir William very well, and it was a great privilege to have the opportunity to spend uh, time with him, and he was a great supporter. Uh, my work mostly includes uh, oil painting of uh, landscape, portrait, still life, flowers, and I've, I guess I've become fairly well regarded for my flower painting of recent years. I'm mostly known for that of recent times. And, uh, but I do like to work from life, so uh, there is that natural challenge of dealing with the time-sensitive issue of flowers wilting or the model wanting to get away or the landscape changing in 20 minutes. I don't like static or second-hand subject matter such as photographic reference, and so I prefer that, that additional challenge uh, to be uh, something that I can meet uh, in responding to the subject. I've done a lot of teaching over the last 40 years. I've taught uh, many hundreds of students through art societies and private classes. I still do, all over Melbourne, and uh, workshops and judging appointments. I've had so many of over the years too. So uh, I really do, uh, I've been lucky to have a, a career in this field. It's uh, very rewarding and to have the opportunity to meet and deal with uh, so many uh, wonderful artists and students and art lovers. I'm uh, pleased to have the opportunity also to have written the uh, uh, history of the 20 Melbourne Painters Society in this uh, uh, publication that we've just released called Mavericks and Masters. The, the society has been a very important part of my life and uh, sort of grew up knowing and getting to know so many of the past members. So I feel as though I'm in a position and have been in a position to be able to continue what they have uh, uh, done for the society over the many years that they were involved. Hi, my name is Barbara McCallum. I joined the 20 Melbourne in 1990. Um, my passion is still alive. Uh, that's what I'd really love to do. I was very interested in painting at a very, very early age. I grew, grew up in Lawn. Um, came in contact with a lot of early painters, the Cahoons. What I love about painting is the actual process of doing it. Uh, the end result is not that important, just that I love painting. I, I enjoy landscaping, I enjoy portraiture, I love everything as long as it's painting. Hi, I'm David Taylor. Very pleased to share these moments with you on what I'm doing uh, and celebrating this great time uh, as part of the 20 Melbourne celebration 100 years. It's been a, a marvellous journey over some 25 odd years with the 20 Melbourne painters and uh, still excited about the exhibitions that go on display. I, I teach plein air painting uh, and this is the studio that you see here. Um, but I teach my students very uh, much the way in which uh, you handle plain air painting. It's um, exciting to be able to paint light, atmosphere and spontaneous results 
the creative process of the watercolour medium is special. The medium of watercolour has this response to creating things where a lot of other mediums will have a different approach uh, at stage where you put it. Watercolour has this way, of, emotive way of working on the paper. Very difficult, but once you master it, it's, it's amazing. This piece I'm doing here is a study for a bigger piece. And uh, I just get very excited about the, the speed and the quickness and the mastery of the light on the paper. I'm Fiona Bilbra. I'm uh, one of the recent members of the 20 in Melbourne. This will be my third year exhibiting. Um, my work predominantly is portrait and still life. Uh, however, this year I've got a few land, uh, landscapes in, but mostly known for my portrait and still life. Um, I'm very privileged to be part of this group, and particularly in the 100th year, it's really wonderful to see that we've got traditional work still surviving in the day of technology. The work of all of the 20 Melbourne, we all, we all have a, the same ethic. We believe in integrity and maintaining our um, interest, you know, to a passion that can't be really diverted by technology or gimmicks. Uh, yeah, we paint what we see and hopefully I would like my work to not be seen with a political message at all. I just paint for knowledge and the craft and hopefully be able to pass that on. I'm a great believer that we should pay close attention to our masters, the historic painters that have gone before us. And I'm very, very mindful that it's, you know, we need to appreciate how they got their work completed and not dismiss the training and the hours, um, everything that goes into painting. It's very easy to have everything quick uh, at a touch of a button through technology, but for me, painting brings it back to reality, it brings me back down. Um, it's a form of mindfulness too, I'd say. The process is actually the most important part of my painting. Getting to know the model, um, setting the model up, putting the hours in, setting my day around how many sittings I'll have. These are all really, really important parts of what it's about being a painter. and. I think, like most of the other painters, that we're probably all in the same position where it's the journey we go on rather than the end product. You know, this is our hundredth year. Hopefully in a hundred years from now, we'll still be painting strong and admiring works of traditional artists. Hope everyone enjoys this show. Hi, I'm Ross Patterson. I'm a member of 20 Melbourne Painters, I think, for about 20 odd years now. Um, I'm basically a a landscape painter, but I, I like to paint in all different mediums. Um, I like to uh, paint on location, which I've always done, I think, since I was a kid, it's a long time now. Uh, I, I look for things that appeal to me as an artist, uh, to interpret and to, uh, to uh, have this vision. I think every artist has an individual vision, but uh, Often I'll go out, but I often carry a, um, a little visual diary or drawing book, and a lot of our ideas come from this, even if I don't get a painting from them. I, I think it's very advantageous to have a starting point, and um, that, that sort of that vision stays with us all our lives. I do like to paint in various mediums are supposed to keep the, the stimulus, the, um, you know, the, the vitality of my thinking and so on. And I, you know, by doing that, by working in different mediums, I find refreshing to change from one to another. But uh, this is a pastel. I often do pastels as well as watercolours and oil paintings. And uh, as much as I can, I paint them either on location or they're painted from works on location rather than uh, depending on photographs. But they are interpretations that is, uh, I've added to this what I think is necessary to make it a lively, interesting painting. I completed the painting basically. Uh, in the studio I added the sheep 
so the sheep sort of don't stay in the one place, that the subtleties of light on them, the cool light and the warm light in sunlight, and uh, the same in the tree, of course, the various highlights within the tree. So there's a range of tonal values. I always think in terms of tonal value, colour, warm and cool colour, and, of course, based around that particular design that will make the painting work. Hi, I'm Angela Abbott and I've been a member of the uh, 20 Melbourne Painters Society for 28 years when I was invited to join and I really enjoy the camaraderie of the group and, uh, and the directions that it's taken me. My subject matter is definitely, uh, definitely um, just incidental things. I have no great strategies in life or in painting. I just paint what's serendipitous, what's there. Um, I guess I do follow through themes if I become interested in something. My actual painting and informal teaching happens at Monsalvat in Eltham, the old artist's colony, um, which had a great interrelated um, sort of parallel with, with the 20 Melbourne painters because um, Jurgensen, being a Meldrumite, uh, was a very close friend of Arch Alexander Cahoon and Clarice Beckett and um, uh, Alma Figueroa and Elizabeth Cahoon and Colin Collihan used to frequent uh, Monsalvat with its, its quirky, quirky ways. Although I'm surrounded at Monsalvat by the ambience and the, uh, the sort of atmospherics that the Meldrumites um, enjoyed, my teacher was completely from a different, um, came from a different angle. She was um, from the National Gallery School, which of course was shared by a lot of the Meldrumites, but she um, came down a completely different different way from the Meldrumites, uh, painted indirectly um, and modified that. She of course was very closely aligned to Sir William Dargie and, and many of the other um, Clifton Pew uh, uh, in uh, people, members of, of quite diverse um, approaches, but uh, Shirley Bourne uh, was my teacher and mentor for five years at the Victorian Artist Society and um, after five years she told me to go out and into the world and start learning to paint, which I thought was wonderful, so I've been trying ever since. Welcome this uh, cold morning, uh, we're at uh, Brighton, my name's Steve Doyle and uh, this is Ray Hewitt. Uh, Ray and I are both members of the 20 Melbourne. Um, we uh, paint uh, together a lot and, and this is just a, a video of uh, one of us uh, in the process of painting. We find that this is the um, um, the most fun you can have just, just getting out and painting on site. Um, it doesn't always go to plan, um, but uh, at the end of the day, you have something that's uh, that's just um, from life and and it and doesn't look manufactured. And we try to get some sort of truth I in a painting. Uh, Ray and I paint uh, similarly, so Ray's doing the painting today. Uh, it's just a, a broad, general approach at the start, and then uh, it's sort of um, uh, correcting mistakes as you go and you can take the, the whole thing as far as you want, uh, as detailed as, as you want, which is the way you do paint outdoors. As you can see, Ray's nearly finished. He's only been on it about three and a half minutes. Is that done, Ray? Are you going to sign it or not? No? OK. I think it's a church, isn't it, Ray? Good <laughs> yeah. And uh, he just masses in the colours and, uh, and uh, you know, corrects as he goes. Uh, He's used a big broad brush to start off with and probably to finish with too for that. Uh, uh, Ray used to teach and, he, and uh, he'd always get his students to use big brushes, big masses and paint very simply. My name is uh, Max Wilkes. I've been a member of the 20 Melbourne Painters uh, since about 1980, 84 I think it was, and uh, I won the Spale Scholarship and then after that I was invited into the, into the Painters Society, which was a great privilege, I thought. The people there, uh, uh, the people I met 
very skilled painters and very interesting people who, and uh, I learned quite a lot from them. Shirley Bourne was one of the members who was a president at one stage and she was a tutor and I went to her for a long time and learnt tonal painting which I think is a wonderful way of painting, uh, learning to paint direct from the subject. Uh, Douglas Mellor was my watercolour uh, watercolor teacher. He taught me to paint outdoors and understand what I was looking at and constantly looking at other people's work to understand, to make me hopefully a better painter. Douglas was very encouraging and we used to paint a lot outdoors. Um, my drawing skills came from the gallery school which I went to when I was about 16, which is, seems a long time ago from Ian Armstrong. He was a, uh, a great tutor and he was interested in you uh, as well as John Brack who, who gave me time in my drawing. I find that painting outdoors is very important. I like the idea of understanding the landscape and so when you come inside to paint larger pictures or pastels, uh, it's a great uh, uh, way of learning. If you learn to paint outdoors, then it seems to be much easier to be able to cope indoors when, when you've got to understand nature. I've been painting for a long time. I generally paint most days, and I tend to paint in a tonal way. I also appreciate drawing and design and craftsmanship in the way of um, putting works together. And that takes quite a lot of work, uh, <clears throat> which I... I do enjoy tackling something very difficult uh, and especially in this case shipping behind you which is uh, a specialist sort of field and I do like to uh, make a statement, put a lot of power into the painting and that's where possibly the artist comes into me, into uh, being an artist is putting strength and power into a painting rather than having it rather subdued. My name is Joseph Bukovich. We are in my studio in uh, Fitzroy, where I've been a resident and have been painting for some 40 years, I guess. I've been a member of um, Melbourne 20, oh, more years than I care to say, probably 20, 20 years or something. I'm probably best known for my watercolours. I have done oils and pastels, but watercolour is my medium. I'm a very versatile artist, probably the most versatile artist uh, around, if I can say that. Um, I do horses, I do street scenes, seascapes, landscapes, interiors, nudes, portraits. Probably my favourite is street scenes and horses. And it's something that I truly enjoy, but I can tackle any subject. Watercolour, as I say, chooses you, you don't choose it. I fell in love with it 40 years ago or more, and I'm still in love with it. It still tortures me, I, I still haven't conquered it. It is a very difficult medium, but that's its beauty, that you are never in charge of it. You may kind of take a ride as you go along. and. What I love about it the most is that it's very fast. I, I just don't have the patience to paint something for days like oil painters do. I'm Greg Allen and uh, we're down here at the moment at uh, Mordialic Creek which has been a, uh, a rather happy hunting ground for me over all these years and I'm sure it has been for the other boys and girls in the 20 as well. The first thing I quickly want to say is a big uh, 100th birthday uh, cheerio to the 20. Uh, it's an incredible achievement to, uh, to come along and exist 100 years later after its inception. Great to be a part of it all. Um, well, look, I've been a watercolour artist all my life. Um, the great thing about doing that, I guess, is that um, we've had a wonderful environment uh, here in Melbourne to do that. Uh, Rotary art shows have been a huge thing to be a part of. Uh, it allows me and many of the other professionals to have created uh, successful careers in uh, Australia, uh, Victoria particularly, I've got to say that. The galleries have been wonderful as well. Uh, I guess the people, the, the clients have actually been quite conservative and they've um, loved the more traditional bent that a lot of the um, Victorian artists have been able to uh, do and, and uh, continue to do. I guess over the years I've been uh, fortunate enough to do it uh, professionally all this time. Um, teaching, 
has been another thing that's been a lot of fun to do, to uh, give something back to everybody. Uh, I've been a very lucky man to have something like art in my life. Um, I think all of us, uh, you'll hear this from all of us, but there is a, a lovely satisfaction that comes from doing something moderately well. Um, it's almost meditational and I think uh, we, we are all very lucky people if we are blessed with any form of creativity. Um, it's a, a lovely thing to do and to make a career out of it uh, that's even, even better. Uh, thank you for listening everybody and enjoy the 20 Melbourne 100th show. Cheers. I'm Amanda Hyatt. I've been a member of this wonderful society, the 20 Melbourne Painters, for 26 years. I'm originally from Eltham. The lovely artistic environment there had a huge impact on my choice of vocation. I did a brief stint as an inorganic chemist and a math teacher, but my creative side was too strong and for the last 35 years I've been a professional artist. I paint traditional watercolour impressionism in the style of our mem founding members, especially Max Meldrum. I place emphasis on tone, which is light, middle and dark tones, and light, of course, light being the important factor behind tonal impressionism and capturing it. Colour, to a certain extent, to me, isn't important, and I like to paint in monotonal work with a, a desire to make an impact with tone and light rather than with colour, although I adhere to the belief that colour is important as well. Currently, I'm in Ireland with a group on an international painting workshop. And a couple of days ago, we were painting on plein air, which is fantastic. And uh, we went to Trinity College in Dublin, where we painted inside the quadrangles of the lovely buildings. And tonal impressionism, I tried to capture the light it was a very dull day. It was very overcast, but still within those range of dull tones, you can still find light and dark shadows. My work appears all over the world from the north of Scotland to the south of Tierra del Fuego. And please enjoy the rest of the watercolorists here, as well as the oil painters and the pastelists at this wonderful celebration of the 100th year of the 20 Melbourne Painters Society. Thank you. Hi, my name is Herman Peacall. Uh, look, I'm both a studio painter and an outdoor painter. Possibly, I would say, 70% of my work is studio, with the remaining 30% outside uh, whenever it's a good day I get outside but you know where I live we don't have a lot of good days I do both oil predominantly oil I would say 80% of my work is oil with 20% watercolor um, I don't really have a preference for oils it just seems to work out that way uh, I'm sort of an artist that Really, uh, what motivates me more than anything would be uh, I have a, a, a deep empathy for the Australian bush. Not so much the Australian landscape, but bush. A very you know, intimate relationship with the bush, trees, uh, the, flo uh, the floor of the forest. So those are the things that really I connect deepest with however when I'm sort of a little bit bored or when I say bored is not the right word but once I'm over and I've done a series of the forest then I tend to paint a few urban scenes just to get that um, mix of both genres but however predominantly I would call myself a realist painter I'm not sure if I'm tonal I'll leave others to make that judgment.